Inquisitorious. You keep using that word. I do not think it means what you think it means. Hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of Zareth Prevails. We're doing another Faction Essentials video after a couple of months of not doing one. We're going to talk about Inquisition because, hey, Grand Inquisitor is right around the corner, being able to unlock him for the second time after six whole months of waiting. So ridiculous. But this team is pretty high-functioning. There's a, It's a very interesting concept however guys there's, there's a lot of things going on so first off uh, this isn't going to be a guide about how to use the team without grand inquisitor now you can kind of just take him out and use fifth brother as a replacement and you get a similar output though lesser because grand inquisitor is significantly stronger another interesting thing about this team is we don't really know how it plays without datacrons ever since they've been released with grand inquisitor we've had a really strong set uh, for, of datacrons with them and so we don't really know what what they can counter without all of that stuff and so I'm gonna show you guys the essentials of how the, this faction works how they all fit together and I'm gonna show you a couple counters of, of things but there's not going to be able we're not gonna be able to show like hey they can just definitively beat X thing every single time like right now they counter Jabba because of their datacron set uh, who knows what they're going to counter next time. This is also not going to be a guide featuring Reva because Reva is not released yet and I don't know anything about her except that she is crazy and we're gonna have to kind of redefine a lot of things once she is out. So we're gonna talk about Grand Inquisitor and his friends. We'll talk about, uh, I do have like a, an infographic to go with them actually guys, we can show you that for just a second here. And that, that can be found in the video description. Go to my Discord channel. Once you get there, my Discord server, there's a channel called Infographics. You can find this here and it's just meant as a companion to kind of help you guys as a cheat sheet of like, oh, which things can the Inquisition do because they have a ton of debuffs and honestly they have like 18 debuffs and I I frankly didn't have time or the space to be able to fit all 18 there not to mention I don't think all of them are super relevant but it's a debuff heavy team and they can do a lot of really cool stuff and uh, it's worth reviewing this stuff because honestly especially if you want to have success in the unlock mission for Grand Inquisitor himself which I'll put a guide out for that as well soon enough but uh, this this is, if you want to have success, you want to know what all of these debuffs do. And so, go get this infographic if you want, if you don't want it, or whatever. <laughs> it doesn't want you, either. So, we're going to talk about uh, the, the infographic, the debuffs, uh, which, I mean, we're kind of doing already. But then we're also going to talk about what Zeta is to apply on the team. What kind of overview like the modding and the way different characters fit into this squad and then I'll show you guys a couple fights and we'll be on our way so keep in mind this is faction essentials this isn't hyper advanced faction use like uh, <laughs> I'm sure that there if there was a class that would be what it's called right but the the idea is we're not I'm not showing you guys how to just demolish everything and you know like there's some people who are able to sometimes kill general kenobi with cat with this team and I i'm not not gonna show you guys that i frankly i'm not probably good enough with this faction to be able to show you guys that i i know when i know this faction well enough to show you the essentials the turn meter uh, or the the speed turn order the uh, essential roles of each character and then i can set you loose that's that's what we can do and that's what we're going to do it's going to be a very interesting ride once we get Reva as well. But that being said, let's get into the game and actually talk a little bit about the actual characters. Well, we could do that. I just want to give you a little zoomed in version of the Inquisitorious uh, debuffs, effects, infographic here, just so, you got, so you're aware of what's going on. So we're showing the, like, the eight key effects or debuffs as, as I've defined it. And, uh, you know... It's just what which characters uh, apply it on which thing. Here, let's see if I can I think I can zoom it in. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, ability block. Uh, it's an AOE from Grand Inquisitor on his first special, and it's also uh, something that you can get from the first special on 
Seventh Sister, and it's no resisting. You can't resist it, and then it's irresistible. <laughs> uh, and and then Eighth Brother also has it on a second special, but only if it consumes two or more purge. So, uh, you know, just just kind of a, a guide, a little bit, a visual guide for you guys. That being said, okay, let's actually do for real get into the game, shall we? <laughs> Whoa! Madness! We're in the game? How'd we get in the game? This is crazy. Alright guys, here we go. Let's talk about Inquisition here. So first off, the Zetas. Uh, I know the, the other day I, I made uh, like a, just a tiny guide about like the gearing of, of this squad and I, I, you know, people were saying, well, uh, you know, your, your your Zeta guide sucked, and I was like, I, I don't know that my Zeta guide sucked, uh, but all because all I said was, put all of them on that aren't leaderships. That that's that's the truth. You want all of those, and then you probably don't need a ton of leaderships unless you're using them for the unlock mission, which we'll talk about that later. But in terms of you know, like, you don't, you certainly don't want Omicrons on these characters, but a few of them do have leaderships. They're like, oh, yeah, that's probably worthwhile, or something like that. And Grand Inquisitor does want his leadership, Zeta, if, if he has, I think it's a Zeta. It might not be. I, I don't really remember which things, honestly, guys, uh, are or are not. They're, it's very worthwhile, though, whatever happens. So, let's, um, I mean, then that's it. You want all of them. They're all vital. Like, every single one of them is vital. Maybe you want an order in which to Zeta them. I guess just put all of them on at once. Save them all up and just, just apply them all at once so then I don't have to answer your questions anymore. <laughs> okay, so... <laughs> I, I'm probably being overly dismissive and I apologize, but honestly, like... They're all pretty important. You guys can kind of look and see what which ones they are. Like, they're all... They're all really good. <laughs> they're, they're worthwhile, guys. They are. And um, otherwise, the o Omicrons, I wouldn't apply any of them unless you really want territory battles, in which case you probably want the leadership one first, followed by the unique and then the special. I believe that that's the, that's the order. That being said, folks, Grand Inquisitor himself, you've unlocked him now, apparently, and he is real good. The, the thing is, he's, so he's going to be third to go on the team, typically. The, the first being Seventh Sister, followed closely by Fifth Brother, and then Grand Inquisitor. So, I have him modded currently, so it's, it's so impossible to talk about him and the squad without talking about Omicrons, uh, and, or sorry, Datacrons. Right now, I want him to be pretty quick, and so I have a speed set on him, and... There's a lot of things that are going on with this squad, guys. They're, it's very d difficult to to just uh, point at one specific thing, the thing that they do. So, Grand Inquisitor, in a lot of ways, is going to be your DPS. He's going to be your damage per second. And so, typically, I think I like offense set with him. And, like a fast offense set. You want, you want that. You also need to keep in mind, guys, all of the characters uh, in Inquisition really want to have protection. Protection is really important on this squad because the things that they're fighting, like Jabba or, you know, maybe like General Skywalker, etc., are going to impact your maximum health by a significant amount. You're also going to be, if you want to have them modded against Jawas and stuff for the Reva mission, you also want protection as well because all that percent health is going to mess with you quite a bit otherwise. Uh, you know, Jabba has all the thermal detonators, it's it's just a mess. So, you kind of just want them to have protection. Now, in terms of the DPS stuff, oh man, there's just so much going on. First off, he's got a really important ability here, guys. And that is called Torture. When you inflict torture on someone, it removes 100% turn meter on them. It can't be resisted, it's, it's real good. And it... What happens, so, uh, yeah, I mean, there, there's a lot of stuff. You guys are going to have to read some of this yourselves. I just can't do it. This guide will be too long otherwise. But with Torture, it takes a bon... It so, the, the character takes bonus damage equal to 10% of this character's max health when damaged by an attack. Uh, and then, the, I mean, it also reduces defense by 10% stacking 
uh, for a max of 50%. So you can reduce their defense by so much by doing this, guys, and that, that makes your characters all therefore hit much harder. And it's for the rest of the encounter when they're damaged. So, uh, really good stuff. It also gives a bunch of buffs to different characters depending on how many stacks of Purge. Now, Purge is kind of a lifeblood uh, ability that, that happens to the rest of the... to happens to your opponent's characters. And, frankly, like, I, I would love to make a guide that shows all, a mapping of how you gain purge or how it's distributed I just don't have time for that right now I didn't I didn't prepare that uh, you guys are gonna have to read the kits and find and uh, honestly if you I hate to say this but if you button mash enough you're just gonna get a lot of stacks of purge anyways there's a lot of things you want to do that's in like intentional things you want to do with this squad but you don't necessarily need to you don't necessarily need to worry about getting a lot of purge. Purge just happens, even if you button mash, uh, if you want to be more more intentional. There's a few different things you can do but uh, to get to get more. But remember, purge is also something that you want to be able to interact with well and understand exactly what you go you're going to be getting if you get rid of the purge, if you are uh, you know gaining purge, if you're hitting someone with a bunch of purge. Purge is <laughs> a really strange word if you just keep saying it. It's like road, road, purge, pur purgill. It's like those weird hyperspace whales and rebels. Anyways, uh, so torture, really strong ability. I didn't actually put it on the infographic, but he's the only one who does it. And yeah, remember, it's a cooldown six. And so unless you're using Seventh Sister to reduce his cooldowns quite a bit, it, it's you're, it's only going to come around every once in a while. Now, other things that happen with him, he has an AoE. This is a really important though thing. It, this AoE does a lot of things. It puts ability block and vulnerable on all enemies that have purge. So if you use it as your first ability, your opponent probably hasn't gotten rid of all their purge stacks. When you start with Grand Inquisitor as the leader, all of your opponents start. All of the characters start with purge. They start with one stack of it, and it's wonderful. It's lovely. It's cool, etc. However. Uh, if it inflicts, if it, it only inflicts those ability, ability block and vulnerable, if they have purge at all, can't, but those, they can't be resisted. Um, now, the awesome thing about this is it also equalizes health, so even if people have healing immunity, it still equalizes their health. And it also equalizes protection, which is crazy. It also dispels all debuffs on them, which is the, the he's the only person who dispels debuffs on his own team. You can heal your own team other play, other ways in other places. He's the only one who gets rid of it. He's also one of the only ways you can heal on your team. And so this one is also a cooldown force. So you have to be pretty strategic in when you use this. Uh, you know, button mashing you want is going to make you spend it way earlier than you want to sometimes. Uh, like in the Reva mission, for instance, you're going to want to save it until you have a lot of damage over times on your team so that you can cleanse it, because that's literally the only thing that gets rid of those debuffs. Now, other things that happen. He gives his allies speed. So, uh, he gives everyone on his so empire allies gain, you know, the, these buffs uh, and 10 speed. If all allies are inquisitorious, then they actually gain another 15 speed. However, that's not all. He So he doesn't just give them uh, he doesn't just give them 25 speed, it's 10 speed, and then if it's their all inquisition, they get 15. They also get all these cool buffs to their max health and max protection, which is nice. Uh, it also makes, he also makes them immune to ability block if he's the lead, which is really nice as well. Uh, let's see, he gains defense, penetration up, and offense up, blah, blah, blah. He also gives all these cool things to the Inquisitors. Now, the other aspect of this, and it's not on his lead, I don't believe, is uh, he gets rid of... He actually also diminishes your opponent's speed as well. Yes, for each Inquisitorious ally, enemies with Purge have minus 5 speed. So when you're looking at starting speed, it's going to be plus 25 on each Inquisitor, and then your opponents are all going to be either minus 25 speed in 5v5 or minus 15 speed in 
3v3, which means your Inquisitors are an effective, what, 25 plus 25 is 50, essentially, or plus 40 in 3v3. That's just an important thing to remember, guys, is it's variable. Because some people are like, no, it's always plus 50 on, on the Inquis Inquisitors. And I think it changes the math maybe a little bit. I, I don't remember on, on the f total calculations in terms of speed. But one way or another, the, the minus 5 speed on your opponent is variable depending on whether it's 3v3 or 5v5 and stuff uh, otherwise yeah so let's see if an enemy evades an inquisitorious allies attack all other enemies take damage uh, you guys can read all this stuff I mean there, there's there's so much that's going on with him uh, he buffs his team by quite a bit and he debuffs his team by quite a bit. They all have an ability called Patience, which was actually held off of their kit until Grand Inquisitor was released. Uh, this this Patience thing, though, it's it's, it's not too bad, you know. And, and it's, it is different. It all starts the same. Uh, that they all gain if if it's a full Inquisitorious team, they all gain t plus twenty percent max health, max protection, and potency. Uh, but then, yeah, this is where it says inflict all enemies with a stack of purge at the start of the encounter, which can't be evaded or resisted. So they all start with purge, and there's no characters out there that I know of that just says they never get purge. I don't I don't think that, that that's been a thing yet. So. Uh, whenever it's whenever purge is consumed or dispelled on an enemy, this character gains three percent turn meter, and I believe all of them have that on their unique. So, Grand Inquisitor, he does some good damage. Put offense sets on him, and then you just want him to be, you just want him to have offense, offense, even have an offense arrow here, and then uh, you know as much as much offense as you can get. Obviously, I didn't put everything here. I put put some decent speed on him. So in 5v5, he is going to be plus 50, essentially. Like, uh, you know, because your opponents are minus 25, I'm just, instead of subtracting the 25 from them, I'm just adding 25 to ours. Therefore, we're getting 25 uh, for them all being Inquisition uh, because of his leadership, and then minus 25 because they all have Purge. Uh, so he's he's going to be an effective 381 speed, which is which is pretty good. And then you just want a lot of offense. I like offense set on him more than speed, but I want him to be fast as of right now. So that's what we're doing. Now let's go. Let, let's talk about the rest of them. So he does he does some decent damage. He also just facilitates a lot from torture. And uh, you know he equalizes things. He's he's kind of he's the all he's the he's the guy who does everything. Seventh sister is, man, she's she's pretty vital, guys. Uh, she's one of the most important ones. I always felt like she was it was a missed opportunity to make. She could have they could have made her into Barris. Actually, I feel like they should have made Barris into her because she Barris is already kind of dark side anyways uh, from the Clone Wars, and she's. They're the same species, but she's not. She's just, uh, she looks like the Wicked Witch of the West or the East, potentially. <laughs> or the North or the South. Who knows how many Wicked Witches there really are. Here's the thing. She does a lot of stuff. First off, she does inflict, she inflicts offense down every time that she attacks with her basic. And the basics also do more damage based on how many stacks of purge happen. Now, the... She's the one who want you want to go first because of this ability. This is a really strong ability that it, it's it's amazing actually. Both both of her abilities, are, like all of them, in fact, are really good. Uh, this is why she's so vital though. So it dispels all buffs and removes 60% turn meter. It also does extra things to Jedi. We're kind of gonna just ignore the impact on Jedi though, just just for fun. And then it also imp inflicts ability block and daze. Uh, on the, your enemy and it can't be resisted it, amazing amazing stuff it also adds more stacks of purge for each buff that's dispelled here lots of really cool stuff and this is why you want her to go first is to be able to take away turn meter from someone and you also want to give them ability block and be able to uh, you know 
They, they, they can't do anything. They're dazed. They can't, they, they can't do anything. It's, it's very nice. They have a bunch of stacks of purge. And then on top of that, you can also get rid of the purge on one stack, of, like one stack of purge from each enemy. And that actually helps because it feeds your turn meter because of your unique that I showed you from, from Grand Inquisitor. But the target ally recovers 30% health and protection plus 10% health and protection for each stack of purge consumed. And so if you're consuming five stacks of purge, you're also getting an additional 50% health and protection that you're healing on that person. And then it also heals other people. It gives people foresight. And then if the target ally is Inquisitorious, reduce this ability's cooldown. Uh, this ability's cooldown by one. Oh, I'm, I'm being dumb, guys. I said that you could do that for Grand Inquisitor. I, um... Totally just misspoke there. <laughs> it's this ability, not someone else's. Her leadership, remember, no do the Omicron. But her leadership, this is a Zeta. Uh, otherwise, it's just Empire Allies getting 16% evasion. Uh, otherwise, uh, you know, this is for the unlock. I guess we don't have to go over it, but this is okay. This is something I'm not likely to ever use again, however. So, you know, don't don't feel like you need to. Her distraction thing. So this is another one, guys. Every time someone on Inquisition goes, she's going to assist. She just goes and hits them, goes and hits them, goes and hits them. She is relentless, and it can sometimes be pretty obnoxious, actually. Sometimes you don't want that. It's like, oh, we're fighting Treya? Well, Seven Sister basically just killed herself because she's assisting so much. Uh, whenever she assists, though, she also inflicts debuffs based on the number of purge that, that happened to people. So accuracy down, healing immunity, speed down, all of that stuff. And that's just uh, when she's assisting. Finally, with the patience thing, she's also, remember, she, uh, all these things, you guys can read it. She also gains 20%, uh, sorry, she gain, there's a 20% chance to gain 100% turn meter whenever someone else on her team is critically hit. And so she's taking a lot of turns as well, because if, if someone does an AoE and it crits all of your characters, then she is going to probably get a bonus turn and just, you know, destroy people. Uh, and then remember, whenever Purge is consumed or dispelled on an enemy, this character gains 3% turn meter. That happens with all of them. So uh, if if it's if Purge is dispelled or consumed on an enemy, it, on all five enemies, then every Inquisitor gets another 15% turn meter. Uh, so she does a lot of cool stuff. She's, she's pretty vital. In terms of what you want her to do, you want her to go first. Remember, these are some of the fastest characters in the game, actually, on base speed. So she's 338. If you want, like, Fifth Brother's probably going to need to be one speed slower, so 337 on him. And uh, remember, the Grand Inquisitor is also giving them an essen essentially plus 50 speed on top of that. So she's, she's pretty dang quick right now. And... Remember, you want protection here it, more than you want health because you don't want health-based damage to get to her as much. Uh, you know, that, that includes facing Treya, who does percent health damage to her, who she's assisting. Um, and otherwise, get some, I mean, if you can get some, uh, just, pr I mean, protection is, is really what she wants. Lots and lots of protection. Keep her alive. And then, I mean, get, getting her some potency, getting her some offense. All of that stuff is pretty good. Um, I don't know, they're, they're all stat hungry, frankly, guys. The team always seems like it's, it's a lot weaker than it should. Like, people complain about how weak the team is, and... I mean, it's just kind of unfortunate because it's not a weak team. It's just a heavy synergy required team. Now, Ninth Sister, the Horn Chinian, as I like to call her, she is extremely big boned. Like, she has tons of bones that are huge. And she's the tank. She, she is vital to the team, guys. Probably the first Relic 7 that you want on the team, in fact, if you're looking at relicking. She has a few different things. I mean, at the end of the day, she's going to inflict Purge, she's going to passively taunt, and she's going to... So this ability is actually... Uh, I used to think, oh, this is this is so annoying. Like She doesn't do any damage. It's physical damage and consume all stacks of Purge on target enemy. And here's the thing. So uh, I don't really care about the like it doesn't do extra damage based on the stacks of purge or anything like it does inflict some damage over times but that that doesn't matter as much the really big thing about it is 
uh, you know, she gains heal over time, all that stuff. The thing that you really want to care about, though, is how she consumes all the stacks of purge on a target enemy. So if someone has six stacks of purge and you're like, well, I don't really need them to have those stacks, then you can give your entire team uh, a bunch of extra turn meter. If you consume six stacks of purge, that's going to be 18% turn meter for your entire team just by destroying it. Remember, she's not doing that much damage, though. The other one is she can do an AoE daze, which is so crazy good. She's also one of the few plug-and-play characters characters that can actually uh, on the inquisition most of them you're like well you know what just just don't don't be don't don't do things like <laughs> you're if you're not with the Inquisition, then don't do anything. But Ninth Sister actually goes really well with Lord Vader, in fact. He, she goes really well. And uh, she she is so crazy thick. She she wants a ton of protection, and once that protection is converted into health, she she gets she gets very, very difficult to kill. She's um she's built very, very thick, just as her big bonedness would imply. Now, I remember she gains the 3% turn meter, she gains the max protection and health, she gains all kinds of awesome stuff. Um, let's see. Yeah, the, awesome, the other thing is that she's able to, she gains taunt, uh, so each time another ally, it, Empire ally, is damaged by a critical hit, she gains taunt and 50% crit avoid for one turn. So, she just passively taunts all the time. And it's obnoxious. It's, pre it's pretty impressive, though. Uh, now, Fifth Brother is one of the facilitators of the squad. He does a lot of really interesting stuff, actually. He wants to be one speed slower than Seventh Sister. So you can see 338 was on her. And now he, he's got 337. And, oh man, she, he's got a lot of stuff. So first off, this is the only instance of Tenacity Down. Inflict Tenacity Down for two turns with his basic. Otherwise, the thing that's really cool about him is he dispels all debuffs as an AoE, and then he gives defense down to everyone, then it deals special damage to everyone. So, uh, you know, this it, it can, so these debuffs can't be resisted. Pretty nice stuff. He gains, gains all and uh, allies potency up for two turns. It's only a cooldown three. Does a lot of really cool stuff. Inflict a stack of purge on all enemies. I mean... This ability is nuts, guys. Dispel all debuffs, which is uh, really strong for this team. It inflicts defense down, which means you can do more damage, obviously. And uh, it's inflicting, inflicting purge on everyone. It can't, that can't be evaded. It gives everyone. It gives everyone who already had purge exposed. It grants all allies potency up. It's, it's a very, very strong ability. His other ability here, he inflicts vulnerable, does all sorts of cool stuff. This is the Ill, this is another thing that's really impressive, though, and, and important. It also gives people, if they've target had at least three stacks of purge, then they can gain damage immunity for one, or he gains damage immunity for one turn, which, which is important. Um, ah, let's see. Yeah, other, otherwise... Yeah, if the enemy was a Jedi, you could inflict fear. He does, he does all sorts of stuff, guys. Lots of debuffs, lots of things. You gotta learn how to use it. Um, his leadership is the best all-comers leadership. You guys can check out that. He also hits back, so he's got counter, and when he punches back, he puts, in, he puts tenacity down on people. Uh, which is pretty nice. And then, of course, he he gains all the all the different things. Guys attacking whenever an enemy damages the character with an attack out of turn, that enemy gains a stack of purge. So the you know that's another way that your button mashingness can get you purge. Now, eighth brother is probably the fifth best character on on the team. Second sister is probably the odd one man out. And uh, Eighth Brother is also really good with the Lord Vader team, actually. There's a lot of things that are going on with him as well. We really probably don't have enough time to go over a ton of that, but inflict one stack of Purge, uh, which, uh, you know, is nice. He also just stealths himself all the dang time. All the live long day, he, he does, he inflicts blind on Jedi characters, which makes it really good in Conquest. And then he also, 
Uh, you know, he, he sets people on fire, puts the accuracy down on people. All just very good stuff with this AoE. The bladed hit is probably one of the most utility, most awesome utility ones ever, though. Uh, which, so it consumes purge, and based off of how much it consumes, it also does a uh, status effect. So uh, you can inflict healing immunity for one stack, which is a really important thing for the unlock for the unlock event, and it's also really nice to be able to do that to like a galactic legend, for instance, like Jabba. Um, it inflicts speed down, ability block buff immunity and potentially armor shred if you do five so re really nice stuff remember it kind of underlights the uh, underlines that you need you want potency on him because the debuffs cannot be resisted by Jedi enemies implying that it could be resisted by non Jedi enemies now otherwise I mean he, he just kind of hangs out in the shadows and does annoying things uh, that's that's basically it. He's probably the person once Reva is out. My guess is that he's going to be shoved out the window. Like he's he's not going to be part of it any longer. He's he's the helicopter guy though. He's um whatever. I don't care. <laughs> Second sister. Uh, now this is embarrassing because I should have six e mods on her, and and I'm working on trying to free up some, but. She wants 60 mods because she's a pilot to a ship that is really strong. Now she's the one that you, uh, like she's the only one that I have that isn't Relic 7. Uh, because I'm not using her for the Reva mission, she's the one that you don't use for the Reva mission. And otherwise, she doesn't do a whole lot other than a ton of damage. She, she's DPS, she doesn't do a whole lot of debuffs. She also can consume up to 5 stacks of purge. And she can, if you can serve enough, consume enough of them, you can stun people and stuff. Otherwise, she just does a lot of damage. You don't, you don't necessarily need that DPS. Like in the unlock events, she is very important to be able to do more damage to the different bosses and stuff to unlock Grand Inquisitor. But uh, she, she kind of outlives her usefulness, unfortunately. So uh, she's kind of the odd person out, and that's why I don't have six E on her, even though. Her ship really, really wants it, because her ship does a crazy amount of damage, and I want her to do a crazier amount of damage. Now, that being said, let's actually go real quick. I want to show you guys how the team works in real time. Uh, we're going to do a galactic challenge here, guys. It's going to be epic. So, I just want to show you guys kind of how the mechanics of how the team works works and how and then I'll show you the, the Jabba mission at, right after that or the Jabba fight I should say so we've got the Inquisition team and we've got the well, got them clocked the way we want them to be clocked hey the brother wants offense mods by the way folks okay so uh, we have seven sister going first we want to dispel the taunt off of Wrecker. We're gonna, it'll also get rid of his turn meter when it goes. Know how everyone's got purge here, so we're reducing their speed and increasing ours. Now, I guess we can probably, we could do a few different things. I like the idea, however, of we could do the AoE and get rid of the, uh, get rid of the um, stealth on fives and then Echo is kind of our huge problem. We don't want him to debuff all of us. And so we're going to use Torture. That gets rid of all 100% of his turn meter. It also gives the Torture debuff to him. And uh, yeah, yeah, you know, he's got speed down and everything. Now, if we wanted to, we could use this thing to put healing immunity on Echo. We don't really need to do that. But what we can do. Why don't we just throw some bombs here, set most of them on fire, we get defense down, all, all this cool stuff. And then he's got four stacks, okay, let's put let's put days on everyone, do the AoE days. And then eventually, Echo is probably just going to stealth, but, uh, okay, so we got the AoE ability block on everyone, pretty cool. And we don't really need to heal right now, but, uh, yeah, so why don't we save the heal for later? And we'll just keep doing damage to Echo as much as we can. We got the stun on him. And now, uh, we could put healing immunity on him. I kind of want to save that for when we hit Wrecker. In fact, why don't we just hit Wrecker real quick with the healing immunity and stuff. Um, okay, we want some turn meter. Watch the turn meter jump while we consume four stacks of purge here. Everyone's got the turn meter boost. And okay, Echo's gone. Wonderful. Now, 
I may as well just save that heal one more time. And we're gonna go for Wrecker next because he's got the healing immunity, he's got all the all the cool debuffs, and you can see this huge line of debuffs that are happening, guys. I like that's that's what we're doing. Uh, that that's the essence of the team are all of the debuffs, and making sure you use them at the right time and, and opportunity. So everyone here has got stealth now. We could heal if we wanted to. I kind of prefer. Let's just choose someone to drag out of stealth. However, all right. So we got six. Remember, we dispelled buffs from there, and for all the dispelled buffs, we also increased the stacks of purge by that many. So let's let's do the AOE. Put an AOE ability block on everyone. We can dispel everyone with that one, and you can see how this team is really, really lends itself well to just button mashing. You want to be intentional though, so we've got this torture ability. We don't really need to use it on Hunter. Let's wait until it's time to hit tech, and we'll just take him out like that. Now remember, this is just a galactic challenge, so there's nothing, nothing too crazy challenging about it. Okay, let's let's get ourselves some turn meter. Everyone's got some turn meter, but look at Grand Inquisitor's turn meter as I dispel this. Give him 18% turn meter, and then here, let's heal everyone just a little bit. We'll consume a little bit of those, a few of those stacks of purge. All right, and Omega here is going to be healing herself. That's unfortunate. We'll have to we'll have to make sure. So she had five stacks of purge, seven sister assisted, and she does healing immunity if there's five stacks of purge on her, uh, which is another reason to keep stacks of purge on characters if you can. Now let's do this because it'll daze her and ability block her. We can ability block her again, and there it is. So uh, now let's let's cut over, folks, to the Jabba mission. I'll show you that, and we can get you out of here. As <laughs> I wouldn't say it's been that timely, but let's let's do it. Okay, so here here's what I, this is with the Datacrons. Everyone's got Datacrons these days, and this is uh, this is in a way. I mean. Okay, so this is an easier version of this matchup. You can easily time out if you don't have enough relics against a Jabba team, even with the current Datacrons, but I did want to show you guys a more, I don't know, like potent version of of this counter. And so, uh, you know, Chrysanthemum is going to eventually revive and everything. What we really want to do is we, we want to give him days if we can so that he isn't hitting us back with his, his Datacron thing with, that gives him the locked buff uh, for Retribution. Um, but he, he's not, he's also, he apparently was able to resist that dodge, or that daze. I forget what mechanics let him do that, but, okay, he's got six stacks of Purge here. And so I use my ability here to give him healing immunity, as well as all those other debuffs that Eighth Brother gives. And then we can do the AoE ability block, because everyone's got stacks of purge now. And everyone's got vulnerable, so we can do, we're doing crits every time that we can. Okay, so Seven Sister is almost dead because of all of those, all of those thermal detonators that boost through. If, if we had been fewer relic levels, probably this would have met with a failure. But, as you can see, okay, we killed Chrysanthemum one time because we have torture on him, we're doing extra damage, we're undermining his total defense, and so we took him out, he'll come back eventually once Jabba gets a turn. Now, I'm trying to figure out exactly what we want to do. I don't want Boosh to hit me back, and so I'm hitting Scando right now until we can get Daze on Boosh, or get a stun on her. So Scando's gone, okay, now we can get Daze from Seven Sister, reduce all that turn meter from Boosh as well, and now we can do an AoE ability block. Remember, that's also health and protection equalization and dispel of all the debuffs on us. Uh, Boosh has all the healing immunity, and Jabba can. If Jabba's going to take a turn, Jabba can also. <laughs> he's not going to be able to do anything other than call and assist because he can only do basic. Now, I could have healed there, but I'm, I saved it for a little bit. And Gamorian Guard here is only Relic 5. I mean. Really, um, my relics, it, in fact, outdo his at this point. So we're saving that torture once again to be more impactful. And okay, Chrysanthemum's back. Let's see. Uh, let's just take him out again. We'll tor we've saved torture for him alone, and we may as well. 
We can just spam these some of these abilities here. You can see this big the big list of debuffs on Gamorian Guard. It's it's kind of fun. Seven sisters just assisting all the damn time, and uh, yeah. Uh, you got this. Good job, Seven Sister. Okay, now, there's a really important thing here, folks, is if we reduce Jabba's turn meter with all the, with any of this stuff, if we reduce his turn meter, then he's going to uh, gain bonus protection. It's not protection up, it's bonus protection, which means it can't be dispelled. You just have to work through it. And so sometimes if you reduce his turn meter, see, I'm doing that so that I also get days on him. He also, he gained all that bonus protection, and I think he took a turn anyways, even though we reduced his turn meter. So, maybe not the very best of opportunities, but you can see how much turn meter we're gaining. Some of it is because every time Purge is consumed, we're also gaining, uh, or I guess debuffs are consumed, we're also gaining turn meter. So the whole team is just gaining a ton of turn meter under this Datacron, which is why it won't necessarily work after this set four is gone. However, I mean, this is also an example of us using all of our debuffs to the right effect and not using them, uh, not using the wrong ones. So see, I wanted to put days on him there, but it would also reduce his turn meter and then therefore give him protection up and therefore make him a lot harder to chew through. We can do the purge, uh, like the, you can take out purge with ninth sister so that everyone gains more turn meter. And uh, yeah. You can see we're, we're slowly chipping away at this Jabba, and that is that. We actually ended up getting max banners there. So, anyways, folks, that, that's basically it. I mean, there's, there's a lot going on here, of course, but I, I hope this helped explain a little bit of what Inquisition is and what they do and how to play them. Um, I don't know. Let me know what your thoughts are. I would love to hear. I'm not the sole arbiter of truth. I'm sure I got a few things wrong. I might have been a bit able to be a little more succinct here and there, but I mean, the Inquisition is a complex squad and you need to know how they all fit into the greater scheme of things. And so uh, I hope that this was helpful. Let me know what your thoughts are. If you want to support the channel for free, of course, hit that thumbs up button or, you know, leave a comment in the comments area, whatever. Help me mount the algorithm one way or another, folks. Thank you all so much for watching. And remember that in all things, Zareth prevails.